Hello Swing Dancers, it's uh, Julien for Blabla Bla Swing and today I have the chance to be with Joel. Hello Joel, can you introduce yourself? Hello, uh, in America I'm Joel Plies and in France I'm Joel Plies. Joel, very good <laughs> French. Um, for me it's the, the first time, um, thanks to this event in Montpellier, Montpellier Balboa Rendezvous. Uh, it was the first time I, I met you and uh, I was really happy to to be in your class with uh, Irina. Um, you you come from the US and you were one of the first who organized a Balboa event. Can you tell us a few words? Yes, so uh, my quick little backstory, I started dancing, swing dancing a little bit later, I guess, in life compared to today's mm -hmm. era. I was in my late 20s Mm -hmm. uh, I went on a date in Chicago, and she took me swing dancing, yeah. and I really enjoyed it. And uh, at the time, I was a business consultant with Anderson Consulting, which is now a company called Accenture. So they shipped me out to Cleveland, Ohio, where I met Valerie Solstrom. We went out to the spy bar on a Thursday night. I danced with her, and she said, hey, you're pretty good. I said, thanks, but I just started. But... Uh, her and I started to teach a few classes here and there while I was working full-time as a consultant. And I would always joke with her. I said, I'm going to quit my job, and we're going to start a swing dance company. <laughs> and she was working for the Red Cross. And she said, no, you're not. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I will. I will. And then, make a long story short, I quit Anderson Consulting. Mm -hmm. She quit the Red Cross. We started a company called Get Hep Swing in 19... 99 wow and we were developing the dance community in cleveland and we did a lot of work with other teachers our mentors frankie manning jonathan and sylvia uh, jonathan bixby and sylvia mm -hmm. sykes mm -hmm. i remember sitting down in a diner in lakewood ohio with sylvia and valerie talking about just the idea of a weekend devoted 100 percent to balboa and just discussing if that might even work. Because everybody we had come in before that, we would do an hour of Bal, an hour of Lindy, an hour of Shag. To make a long story short, we decided yes on uh, the All Balboa Weekend. That started in 2001. And the rest, as they say, is history as far as that, that great event in, in Cleveland. Valerie still continues that today. You, you're not. You're not. I, I left Cleveland in 2002, mm. and at that time, Valerie continued the event. I moved to San Diego, California, and I started another event called the Balboa Rendezvous, and that was 2004. Okay. Mm. Um, so, that's, so some people might know me via Valerie for All Bell Weekend as far as Balboa goes. Some people might know me for Balboa, for Balboa Rendezvous, mm -hmm. which is in California. That event went from 2004 um, to 2014. Um, and uh, so, th or 2005, 2005 to 2014. It was 10 years. We had 10 years of the Balboa Rendezvous. Um, so I did, I did some big, 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 big events. Um, other people might, I, I also ran a camp in Australia called Swing Camp Oz. So I, I've done some big, big events, but I've always been really passionate about teaching. Mm -hmm. So the first time I came, I think, to Europe, if I remember correctly, was the, like 2005, around then, with uh, Cathy and Gilbert, the Swing Cat C, and I got exposed to a lot of people in, in Europe and they enjoyed my teaching yeah. and so for you this weekend is pretty much back in oh back in a not future but back in a day oh <laughs> yes yeah long long history here with not only this event but even the dancers mm -hmm. uh in in france not only here but paris toulouse grenoble mm -hmm. i've i've been to a lot of different mm -hmm. places um so that's that's my little background as far as being out in this area, and it's not only been Balboa, it's been Lindy Hop, and yeah, it was we used my to next do. Question. So yeah, I used to go like there was a Paris Bell Shag Festival. We used mm -hmm. to teach collegiate shag and 
Balboa, Lindy Hop, and uh, I think uh, for me, back when we were first traveling and teaching, again, I just really loved to teach. And I, I love to give the opportunity for people to, to dance as far as like creating events. I love to create an opportunity for people to learn. So the, the ability to teach a class to me is the most joyful thing. If I, you know how, so some people like to compete, yeah. for example. Mm -hmm. I don't like to compete. Mm -hmm. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. And so for me, teaching is, is the top. The top yeah. give, give me the opportunity to teach and it's, it's wonderful mm -hmm. versus competing. Give, give me the opportunity to create an event for people or a dance. I love it. Give me the opportunity to perform. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Not the top, though. Give me the opportunity to compete. <sighs> Yikes. That's the bottom. You do understand? Oh, yeah. That's the bottom of my personal list. And so I think because of that, when I do teach, and you experienced it this weekend, I think people see a difference in how I teach versus other people. Mm -hmm. Not saying that the way other people teach is, is bad or wrong. Mm -hmm. But I bring, and I know this about myself, I bring a joy to the classroom that I want the students to, to take from it. Mm -hmm. I, I want everybody to be better dancers, technically, quality of movement and whatnot. But if you're in class and you're not enjoying yourself, hmm, yes. the, to me, the joy of swing dance is what I want to continue. Mm. Is, does, that, does that make sense? Oh, perfect. It's and, and, yes. and so for me personally, I will often check in with myself because any teacher is guilty of this, maybe talking too much or getting too technical. And, and I think it's a, it's a good skill for every teacher. So if, if you're out there and you want to be a, a teacher, in my opinion, a good teacher, just, just remember, pay attention to the room, pay attention to yourself. You, can, you mm. can catch yourself when you're getting too focused and too technical and take a step back. Amusez-vous, détendez-vous. Yeah, it's right? a really good advice. Yeah. Re relax, have fun yeah. with it, because we're, we're swing dancing. It doesn't matter if it's Balboa, Shag, Lindy, Charles. It doesn't matter. It's, it should be joyful. Mm. Yeah. Now, the, the better dancers, mm. they have more joy dancing with better dancers because they, they enjoy that level. Mm. But you have to remember where you came from. Exactly. Nobody, nobody walked on that dance floor being amazing. Yeah. We were all beginners. Now, some people have better skill than others, yeah. right? I've known people that started and maybe a month or two later, they're amazing because yeah, yeah, yeah. they work hard. But for most people, it, it takes a while. Yeah, completely. Yeah. And uh, what I am, I'm a really baby Balboa dancer. I mean, uh, today, what this weekend, it, it was my third... Um, workshop of Balboa. Yes, you are uh, a baby. Yeah, <laughs> completely. And, uh, but uh, I, um, I realize that uh, most of the Balboa dancers are not just Balboa dancers. They're just a few. They, they also dance Lindy Hop. They, they, they try or uh, dance Shag, they dance Lindy, they dance uh, Blues. They okay. And um, they are more, they, they've got the uh, ability to, to dance more than yes. just a Lindy Hopper. Yes, so you bring up a good point. I think if I go back to, okay, we were, we were talking before the microphones came on. We were, we were talking about like the, the new generation or the newbies, however you want to label them. So you, you could have what I would call your, the, the ma I, would, I would call them the masters or the original dancers, the mm -hmm. old timers. Some people call them the old timers. Yeah, the original dancers from back in the day. And then there was that next generation of people that worked with them, mm -hmm. kind of brought, maybe brought them out of retirement or, you know, that kind of situation. So there's that group of people who I would say my generation really look, looked up to. Uh, Ryan Francois, uh, Pasadena Ballroom, 
uh, Tammy Stevens with Frankie, things like that. I, I, I luckily had a chance to work directly with Frankie and in the Balboa world, Maxi Dorf and Willie Desitoff and people like that. But then, like we were talking about, the, then there's us, and then there's kind of this in between mm. where it's you may or may not like be able to define a generation or a group. But back in my day, we were still dancing everything. Yeah. Okay. And so th I bring this up because I would label myself and the, the people of my generation swing dancers. Meaning, put on a song, how does it feel, what's the tempo, I'll dance accordingly. Is it, I'll dance blues, I'll dance shag, I'll dance bal, I'll dance mm. Charleston, I'm going to be a swing dancer. Now, over the years, and I think social media is responsible for this, and just in general, kind of the way people are nowadays, you will, you will have that. Think about the event you go to where there might be a blues room. Or there's the Balboa room. Exactly, separate. When, when Valerie and I started GitHub Swing, we had a room, the room, mm. the one room mm. you danced in. And yeah. guess what? We did all of it. Mm -hmm. And so if a blues dancer wanted to dance blues, you asked the DJ to play a blues song. Or better yet, go ahead, step up to the, to the booth, play what you want to play, and let's all dance to it. Mm. We never... We never even thought of it that way then. It's very common now. It's almost everywhere I go. Yeah. It's that's the norm. That's the norm now. So you take, you take a smaller community, and that's fine. It it is what it is. At a huge event, it might make sense because you might have, fifty people in the blues room and a hundred people in the bell room and, two hundred in the Lindy room. But let's be real. You go to your own little community where maybe you only have. 30, 40 hardcore dancers. Mm. Go ahead. Take 10 of them that go to the blues room. <laughs> take the other five. That, and all of a sudden, you got a really small group of people that are dancing together. Not that that's bad, but it is what it is. Mm. So I challenge anybody out there that's a community leader, think back in, back in our day. Be a swing dancer versus being a bal dancer. Or a Lindy dancer. Not saying you can't have pride in being a Lindy dancer mm -hmm. or I'm a bell dancer and take pride in that. Yeah. But try to consider yourself a swing dancer and try a little bit of everything. You don't have to master it all, but you should know all these dances that were happening back in the day. Just a little bit and, and play with it. I I think that would be some advice for you know, new community organizers. Mm. A little, yeah. From and, and, uh, it's it's what I, I I saw the, especially the the Lindy of community I know very well since ten years and uh, it's um, Lindy up event point Peri period period yeah and uh, and uh, yeah so it's it's starting to to move the lines slowly but uh, it's it's uh, catch me more when I go to Balboa event. That uh, uh, I have um, representation that they were they were also just Balboa dancer and just that, and I be surprised that no, <laughs> sometimes we can do whatever you want you, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's more I feel these dancers I met are more accomplished because they 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 know more stuff. Yes. And so when when you dance with them, it's. Um, it, it there is more possibility. And yes, uh, when absolutely. you hear a song, you can say, oh, this one, the feeling is more like that. Yeah, go on. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or you might take a, a, a movement or a figure that somebody would label. Mm -hmm. Let's say label it as West Coast Swing. Mm -hmm. But you pull it into bell to, ma to make it, give it the Balboa feel, but it looks like a West Coast. Do you understand? Or oh, yeah. anything. Any, a tango. You take a tango move. And you, you try to infuse it into, into the Balboa. So now there are certain, uh, normal, there are certain people who are against that. You can label it purist or whatever. You say, like, that's not Balboa. Okay. But if you want the dance to grow, then you gotta, you got to let that happen a little bit. Yeah. You, you, 
you know, and, and I'm also I'm a big fan of the history of the dance. So I try really hard to talk about the influences of the dance or where it where it came from, both on the leader end and the follower end, and what people were doing historically. Um, I don't want to I don't want to lose that. And again, that kind of goes back to our right before we turned on the the mics. It's like we have that history kind of written and documented of like Frankie and those guys, but this it's this in between. This is why I appreciate what you're doing. It's kind of this in between that we lost yeah, a little bit of that quote unquote history. And I think the reason is we we used to just go to these events with like those main teachers that everybody went to. Ryan Ryan and Jenny, uh, Kenneth and Helena, Rob and Diane, mm. right? And Harang was a big part of, of all of that and their influences within Europe. But then I think the smaller communities realized, hey, I, I, I can teach. I, I can develop my own scene. Yeah. Or, or better yet, like, hey, maybe I should go teach a little bit too. So you've got this kind of in-between where you have a lot more teachers yeah, all over. There is an explosion. There, uh, yeah, the explosion. About 2005 yeah. uh, since this moment. I, I don't know if it's less, more or less at the moment than YouTube come. The social, I was going to say social media, and, uh, YouTube, and Facebook. The computer was not so expensive that everybody can buy an, a computer at home. And then the smartphone also. And more and more video come up and uh, and maybe it, there is a role I in to play in this story i don't know there is a, a, a nice speech of uh, ryan francois in ted talks yeah about the fact that uh, this um popular popularization with um youtube it's great in a way but in other it way it took away like his dance yeah, yeah like everybody's starting to dance in the same way because we watch all the same video and we want to to dance like uh, them or them and um, he, he said that before when he comes to i don't know vienna he there is a certain way to dance and he can tell oh you come from vienna and uh, yeah but now now it's difficult to say and i don't know if it's bad or wrong but uh, there is uh, changes and uh, yeah at, at some point um, many people starting to, to to teach to to build a small community and now we are we have uh, the possibility to at least in in europe every week every week there is an event somewhere. oh yeah and sometimes man now it's uh <gasps> where when i can organize my event not in the same time than other <laughs> yeah other good luck you can't. it's almost impossible now you yeah. can't it few few years ago it was okay but now it's not yeah there will there will always be something that conflicts something going on somewhere always now yeah and, and so then my my advice as a as an organizer i mean obviously first of all hopefully no one's doing it maliciously meaning like i'm going to organize yeah. this on this so there's a an exist let's say there's an existing lindy hop weekend that for the past 10 years it's been on this date. Hey, man, don't organize your Lindy Hop weekend on that weekend. There's a lot of other. Now, it's difficult, but come on now. Let's try to be nice. Mm. So that's the first thing. D if, I, if I may, don't be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> okay? I mean, exactly. hopefully everybody understands that phrase. But, uh, but, then, but then as an organizer, though, do what you want to do. You have a vision. You have an idea. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to create it. Mm -hmm. Go for it. And, and go for it and and hope that you have the, the people that want to come and support it, whatever that is. Like for me, for me and Valerie, like, th yeah, it was that first all Balboa weekend. It was crazy. We And now, like, now they're everywhere. Mm. But uh, back then we were like, I don't know if this can work. And then for me personally, it was just taking it like a little step further with the Balboa Rendezvous. My goal again, thinking about the vision, I wanted people, again, historically, to have the opportunity to dance where it all started. 
So it was in San Diego because selfishly that's where I lived. So let's bring everybody to San Diego. But then 96 miles north, there's the Balboa Peninsula, Newport Beach. And so I went to the Balboa Pavilion. It's an, a building that was built in 1905. Mm -hmm. And it was there when the research, when Balboa was, was created. It's like, it's like the Savoy Ballroom mm -hmm. of Balboa. And I walked in, and it was under new ownership. And I remember talking to them, like, hey, I, I would like to do a dance event here. They, they said no. Again, going back to, like, if you have a vision, go for it. They said no. It, it took me months yeah. to uh, convince them that this was a good idea. Mm -hmm. And you succeeded. And I succeeded. <laughs> and ironically, the first night, they were going through a renovation, the ballroom, everything. The first, the night of, of the event, so Sunday night, everybody went up to the, to the peninsula and danced in this beautiful ballroom. That night was the first night for the, in, the investors, the people that were renovating, all the mo people that put their money in. Mm. And I remember them coming upstairs and seeing what we were doing. And the same people that said no to me months earlier basically were like, thank you. Because now all these investors saw the gold mine mm -hmm. that they had, this beautiful ballroom. They were almost going to take out the ballroom and put in just seats and things like that. Mm. But I was like, no, 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 no. Leave the floor. I want to use the floor. You, this is historically important. And uh, it, it was the, the, are we talking about Calbal? No. No, it's Balboa. The no, 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 no. Okay. Balboa Rendezvous was uh, 10, 10 years before. And it was in this. It same was in, okay. but it was at the building called the Balboa Pavilion. Okay. Calbal now is, is in, New it's in that area, but mm -hmm. it's at a hotel. It's like Camp Hollywood or okay. Albal. Ah, okay. It's in a hotel, Never but it's in that area. Mm -hmm. And I think. Of, I, th I think on Sunday afternoon or whatever, everybody has the opportunity to go to like the beach area, mm -hmm. kind of like the beach clip, yeah, which exactly. is famous. The nice beach. Yeah. 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 But the but the Calbal event is fantastic. It's probably one of the biggest events now for Balboa. But Laura Laura had started that. That was after Balboa Rendezvous was over. So two thousand and that was two thousand and four to two thousand thirteen, ten years, and I don't remember when Calbal started. But it was after Bell Rendezvous. So that's a different event. So and All Bell Weekend, Bell Bowl Rendezvous, and now Cal Bell. Okay. And now this pavilion is uh, still alive? It's still there. So yeah, there but is it's party. There is... I, I it's, it's, it's owned by a restaurant group. Okay. And uh, like I said, if you have a vision, go for it. But I'm not the best businessman. It is extremely e expensive. Yeah, it's okay. basically like a, like a wedding place where they you 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 have to spend like thirty thousand dollars on food to book it. Yeah, okay. You know, it was one of those places, yeah. right? Versus a, a hotel, and I'm gonna just rent some ballrooms and stuff. And so it's the same pavilion where we consider the Balboa was born. Okay, across the street. So where? So if you get a chance to travel to California and you go to Newport Beach mm -hmm. and you actually go to the pavilion, which you should. Now, so there's the pavilion, but across the street where the pier is, Newport Pier, mm -hmm. if you're looking at the pier, there's a parking lot. Mm -hmm. That parking lot used to be the rendezvous ballroom. So when you're talking about Balboa, the rendezvous ballroom, okay, I'll, 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 the rendezvous ballroom would be the Savoy. Yeah. So it's a, the equivalent. The Savoy doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. The rendezvous doesn't exist anymore. Okay. But the pavilion was right across the street. So the pavilion had dancing, had all kinds of things when the rendezvous, it, it actually burned down yeah. twice. Twice. <laughs> I so I know for once, but twice. And and if you're standing in the right spot, so you're looking at the pier, and in the corner of the parking lot, uh, I haven't been there in a while, but it's a white, like a a white uh, pillar, and on that pillar is a plaque. Yeah. And the yeah. plaque commemorates the rendezvous ballroom. That's how important okay. it was. Hmm. So that was where, and and if you see pictures, 
and this is the again the kind of the history of Balboa, you don't even see the floor. You just see bodies. That's how crowded it was. Yeah. That's how popular the dancing was. And so you you had to dance in this small little you physically didn't have the room. Nowadays we can't appreciate it because there there's some crowded dances, but nothing Compared like to it that, was yeah. there. Uh, it's it's link me to to this uh, is this a, a, a myth or not that Balboa dancing was born because it's it was too so much crowd that then you have to to not doing breakaway and so uh, to be in pure ball and yes poof, Balboa. A absolutely absolutely true and 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 I've talked to enough of the old timers yeah. mm -hmm. where and it wasn't just like a story from one person every single one of them talk about being in California and at the time in the you know 30s and 40s uh, places like the barn uh, the uh, just so many so many ballrooms along the coast mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and so uh, the story I heard and I'm gonna stick to it because I love it so said Balboa dancer goes to one of the ballrooms They do a little Balboa, they get a little bored, they start doing some swing outs, throw outs, whatever. They would get kicked out. Yeah, okay. You would get kicked out of the ballroom. So there was a, a train called the Red Line, and yeah. the Red Line would go down the coast. I, I, so I, I, about this train. I leave the ballroom, I get on the Red Line, go to the next town. Every town had a ballroom. Mm, okay. Every town had some kind of pavilion ballroom. Go into that dance. Do a little bell, get bored, swing out, get kicked out, go <laughs> down. You get what I'm saying? Down, 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 down. Guess what the last stop of the red line was? The pavilion. Yep. Newport the Beach. Rendezvous. The pavilion was the last stop. So guess what? Can't swing out anymore. I got no more. I got no place to go. Yes. <laughs> so now you got all these Balboa dancers dancing closed position. Nowadays, we would call it, label it pure bell or bell. Mm -hmm. Where some people would say they're the Balboa purists. Mm -hmm. In other words, and, and it's pretty rare. I would say it's rare. If you if you sit back at, at a dance, Balboa event, whatever, and you watch, it's pretty rare to see one couple stay in closed bow position the whole song. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But that used that used to be a thing to do. Yeah. Physically, because you didn't even have the space to do a toss out, a throw out, a lolly kick. Yeah. You just you you seriously didn't have the space. Even for a lolly. Even for a, you you do a kick, you're taking out one couple. Oops, sorry, just wow. kicked you. That's how look. That's how crowded it was. I, okay. So, when we talk about like, you know, you you keep your footwork precise and small. It's not just for the aesthetic. It's not just for the look. For me personally, it's also carrying on that history of you want to dance in this small space because that's all you had back in the day. We can't, we can't even wrap our heads around it now because we normally have a bunch of space, you know? It will be amazing to, to recreate this, this red line and to... to To make this this trip, this journey again. There, <laughs> and I to finish to oh, to crowd. I can't yeah, do right. More. Recreate oh. it. There, I think on YouTube there there's a really nice talk with Peter Loggins mm -hmm. at an event talking about the SoCal area. Mm -hmm. um, Peter's very knowledgeable yeah. about all of this. So, and I think it's on. I'm I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube. I mean, stuff is out there. The mm -hmm. history is out there if you care to 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 watch it and pay attention to it. Okay. Okay. So this kind of brings us back to that little that little point of the like the original dancers versus this generation and and whatnot. I I think each generation, and it might be because the history is just so readily available online, that we don't talk about it as much. Yeah. Exactly. And so the the people that I learned from would always talk about Frankie and Willie and and Norma, and Jean Veloz, and, and um, Ann Mills, like, we would always talk ab about them. And I feel like w then we, meaning my generation, me, Valerie, kind of that group, we'd still emulate and talk about our mentors. But over the years, you start talking less and less about your mentors. Mm. 
that's why we're losing that history. Yeah. Because it's you can just go online and find it, but we're losing the ability to do this. Yeah. To to talk about it. And, and again, I feel it. I will okay. challenge the teachers. It's your job if you want to keep the history of the dance alive to do your homework and to infuse it into your classes because if you don't do it nobody's going to do it exactly. and we yeah. used to do it a lot more mm -hmm. but yeah. so i agree yeah, yeah. and for for the lindy hop scene i, I suppose the um, something changed after the the death of rocky manning and after the death of norma miller there there were no and down on turn nowadays there's stress um, Yeah. And and uh, he, he he don't seem to want to to take the the role in this order. So he, now there is no more mentors, no more models, and everyone yeah does their stuff in there. In, in so yeah, yeah. something changed. Some some and again, it, it it it's your your personal preference. Again, like I really enjoy the history of the dance, and I enjoy carrying that on but you don't have to like you obviously don't have to care at all about history to, to teach and to dance also yeah, yeah. And, and and it's okay that's okay mm -hmm. it's okay uh, but <laughs> i for me personally it'd be nice to carry on that history mm -hmm. don't just leave it up to the students to look it up or find out about it like yeah talk about the people that that help create the dance help mold the dance and where it came from yeah, yeah. and and moreover um i realize also uh, i'm teaching since um six years now and uh, i realize in my class most of the time the the students don't know the people who mention but it's it's uh, completely normal and i do my job <laughs> right. my own words to to talk about these guys uh, and women sometimes and uh but also They, they were not about um, at all about Count Basie. Mm, music, music-wise, uh, yeah. about this um, this swing era and uh, i, i, and and if I trying to to mention some Jimmy Lunsford, uh, Tommy Dorsey, even Paul Whiteman, uh, what? What? Who? And um, yeah, uh, so now I I, um, I have took the decision since one year that. Every time I put a song on the class, I mention who is um, the artist. So they, um, they are um, something in the in their mind. So I, I mention Jonathan Stout every time, and so yeah, they, they, good. they know. They yeah. know. they have heard about uh, Jonathan Stout one time. Right. Exactly. And on the flip side, you could go a whole year and not mention a single artist. Yeah. Right. You could. Yeah. So again, it's like it's everybody has kind of their their preferences or, or the things that they want to carry on, and it and it doesn't take much. You you could again, the, the, you know, a goal for organizers out there, uh, maybe once a month or every three months or every four months, just have a little video session. There's so many great documentaries mm -hmm. about the original dancers. Just get just have all the swing dancers come together, watch it, and then have a dance afterwards. Or music wise. Hey, this month we're gonna we're gonna talk about Count Basie, and specifically listen to it and and talk about it. Yeah. But if we never, if you never ever do that, because again, the resources out there, eh, it's easy to look up. It's a responsibility. Yeah, yeah. And we we have to carry on that mantle, so to speak, right? They say passing on the the torch. So if you if you want to be a really good swing dance teacher. I don't care if you're a bell teacher, blues teacher, I don't care. If you want to carry on the mantle of this dance, take take the time to do your homework. Learn your history and try to pass on that history however you feel like you can, whether it's little nuggets in class, whether it's a weekend devoted to whatever, mm. or a little thing for your own small community, watching a documentary or whatever. But Please do that. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, you spread the word. The yeah. message is clear. And um, so, wha what is the? Um, you you organize the um, really big events. I uh, I know that we we have got a lot of small events in in Europe, like two uh, thousand, three thousand students. Uh, it's 
middle, but your it's high level. <laughs> what is the the most difficult part when you organize things like that, like all Balboa weekend, uh, Balboa rendezvous? Oh, well, I mean, obviously the logistics of pulling things together. But again, it's your it's your vision. So you figure out kind of what you want to do. And at the end of the day, you, you need a venue, you need some music, and then you obviously need the dancers to, to support it. Yeah. So you, you create that and the logistics of that. No, nobody really, un, I'm speaking to all my fellow organizers out there, you all know what I'm talking about. So a dancer shows up to an event and they're like, ah, oh, this is great, but they just see all these people and think, man, we, th these people must be making a ton of money. Some people do, some people don't. It doesn't matter. The, the point is what you don't see when you show up to that dance is the hours and days, exactly. weeks and months that go into creating just that night of dancing for you being the social dancer. Mm -hmm. So the logistics of it obviously are what it is. I think the difficult part of being an organizer is... This is true of anything. You can't please everyone. But the hard part is is just hearing anybody being negative about your event in any way. Because again, it's just it's like if you if you organize an event, it's it's your baby. Mm. Nobody likes to be told their baby's ugly. <laughs> Nobody likes to be told that I don't want to hang out with your baby. Yeah, it's a good metaphor. It's mm. you it's my baby, whether it was the all Balboa weekend, whether it was Balboa Rendezvous. Swing Camp Oz, Swing Camp Catalina, whatever the event is, it's somebody's baby. Mm -hmm. And so when you complain about it, about the price, about the venue, about the band, about the teachers, yeah. it's, you have no idea how much work that went into it. Now, I'm all for feedback. Every event I've had, I always would send out a feedback mm -hmm. form. I'd get the feedback. I'd hear all the, the things I did wrong. And so you tried, you try your best to improve upon it and whatnot. But uh, that, that's, I would say that's, that's the hard part. Mm -hmm. The hard part is putting all of yourself into an event and having the, the negativity come in, whatever that is. Because it, it, in my opinion, it really doesn't need to be there. If, if, you don't, if you don't like the event, guess what? Don't go to the event. Exactly. Like find the event that you really love or better yet, This is the this is what I tell people like, man. If you really don't like this, create your own. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I don't I don't want to do that. Oh mm -hmm. oh okay, I see how it works. You want to complain, but you don't want to do the work to create what you want, and yeah. it, and it's okay. So that that that's the hard part, right? The hard part is kind of dealing with that and it's natural. People are you can't please everyone, so someone's not gonna. Mm. It's so funny because. At the at like I said, like the evaluation at the end. So you get ten people complaining about the band, and you get ten people that love the band. <laughs> three people hate these teachers, three people love these teachers. Yeah. And it's you you sit back and you analyze the, the data if you actually do this as an organizer, and you look you look for the outliers, right? So if everything's balancing out, because some people are gonna love it or hate it. But every once in a while there's that Ooh, wait a minute. There's a lot of people that didn't like this part of it. Mm. All right. Now we got something. Let's look at that. How can we fix that? How can we make that mm. better? Yeah. Things like that. And so just that kind of that kind of stuff. Do, so. Does it take um for for um, event like that? Does it take like one year? Like the 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 last edition finished and you were also starting to working on the next oh yeah yeah well you if you'll notice any any really good event organizer so you go to the event the flyers there for the next one yeah right so so all the work on the venue and it may not be all the details but enough work has gone into the next one mm -mm. so i and so i would say the bigger events yeah it's a it is an annual process of finishing up the event that you have i would say you have maybe maybe one month to relax but you got to get right back to it yeah 
all in all in all honesty mm. a big 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 and event it's like a um, few days in a week uh, is it a full time job or oh yeah yeah oh, especially when see okay this is fun because that for again going back to all bell so valerie and i and i i still have the the registration page mm. it's laminated it's like like that was it like back in the day we didn't have social media yeah we we really didn't even have that big of an email list mm -mm. email was just kind of starting to become popular so valerie valerie and i talked to sylvia we decided to do it we make a piece of paper that is registration and we have we have a website but even the website was really crude okay and and we but all of it from that very first one was paper registrations people wrote like the mail was coming in not online registration paper registration yeah so we did a leap of faith we we put a, you know here's how you register fill out this form mail it into us and we sat back and hoped that people would come and nowadays it's more instant like you know i use my whatever my event planner you know program there's a bunch of them out there now and it, all the registration goes through it all goes through paypal or whatever there's mm -hmm. no no checks there's no, yeah. and you can see like um i think hillary with uh, camp hollywood yeah. Yeah. again going back to like the the complainers or whatnot the first the first tier of discount tickets for camp hollywood sold out in minutes and i believe it because the event is awesome it's incredible so the reality of those selling out like in two minutes, absolutely believable from, from my side as an organizer. That's how amazing this event is and how great like, she runs it. So what does she do? She gets complaints from people saying, there's no way those sold out. You're trying to get more money out of people. It's, and again, that's the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. She's a great organizer. She's yeah, been doing she's it for years. 20 years. And so do you know what? Do you know what she doesn't need? She doesn't need to hear that. Mm. She yeah. doesn't. Yeah. She's an exceptional event organizer, great person. And so th that's, the, that's the stuff that's hard for us mm -hmm. now as organizers. People see the big event. They think it's just we're making money hand over fist. They don't see the daily weekly hourly grind yeah. that we on go the, through. on the track podcast she she said that oh did you talk to her no not to her oh. but uh, i listened the track podcast uh, she made oh, with uh, with uh, with ryan and uh she, she said it's it's, it's a full-time job yeah for one one year and she she she's done everything by herself yep. it's amazing and she she read and done everything yep. um wow respect yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so like back in the day like that's valerie and i went to Camp Hollywood. Camp Hollywood was one of the events that, that motivated us to even start, start an event. And then when I left, when I left Cleveland, then Valerie Sahlstrom and Marty Klempner, Marty and Valerie then continued the All Bell Weekend. And uh, I guess they're the ones that kind of put more of a competition focus on it mm -hmm. if i have to label it as a formula mm. okay i'll label this as a formula the formula is get a hotel everyone stays in the hotel have a lot of different competitions have a, some good bands that's that's the american formula like in snowboard in sweden right mm. okay and and that and some people like that formula some people don't and so to put it in perspective when I did the Balboa Rendezvous, I purposely didn't do it in a hotel. Mm, okay. And the reason was because I, you can go to Camp, Camp Hollywood's yeah. great. I love it. I don't want another Camp Hollywood. Mm -mm. So down in San Diego, we would have the classes in, at the time we had some nicer ballrooms and stuff. So I'd have people go to these different ballrooms. So the hard part though, and the big feedback for me personally was like, we got to travel all over the place to get to class. And, and so you book a hotel, but it may not be, you can't just like unload your stuff and just walk around the hotel for four days. You actually had to get in a car, go to this ballroom, go drive up north. Mm -hmm. We had buses for some people, but a lot of people had to drive up and they didn't like that. And I get it. 
I get it, but that's the vision I wanted. I yeah. wanted people to dance in actual ballrooms. Yeah. I didn't want people to dance in a hotel on a piece together floor. Yeah. You get to do that every year at one of the greatest events in the world at Camp Hollywood. Why would I do the same thing? Yeah. And uh, and this formula is okay. Uh, it's yeah, it's a beautiful formula. Uh, it uh, works great. I talked to uh, to Vinny who is organized the uh, uh, Grenoble Swim Festival since many years too and and he he, he wants the same formula he discovered in jumping at the woodside in England and uh, it's the same not on the same spot but uh, the class is here and here and here you have to move on to to yeah to move to to go to and s to the party and, and some people like that and but, but see, I think the Europeans you you I think the Europeans are just so used to traveling and they're a little more open to that's what we do mm. you're not you're not You don't worry about getting on a train to go here and there, and it, so the travel part isn't as bothersome to you. Um, yeah, but you're not so negative about it. But like in America, the the formula is: I want my hotel event. Yeah, I want the but convenience of it. Maybe, but it, maybe it's because in America the the distance are really bigger and. Uh, when you have to drive, uh, you, you drive a lot. Like uh, for yeah. us, uh, we drive five hours. It's a oh, it's a long journey. But for an American, maybe just five hours, it's completely normal. I don't know because I never been in America. But it, but again, I, the, I say the formula because it works well in America. Mm -hmm. it, it's the convenience of it. People people like to just hunker down in that hotel and dance for three days and not worry about anything else. So it's. It's good. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's 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 a way to But do an event. In fact, the the perfect formula who who please to everyone doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. So yeah, yeah. Um, you have to to do your vision. Yeah. So the yeah, and then uh, again back to the formula. Some people really enjoy competitions, mm. and more and more. And so if and if that's what you like then you'll go to an event like a, like All Bell Weekend or Camp Hollywood where it's a it's competition focused. There's a lot of great social dancing, but get ready for your social dancing to be interrupted mm -hmm. by 15 to 45 minutes worth of competitions, mm -hmm. and then we get up and dance again. Some people be like, no way. Yeah. And, and that's, I think, a little bit, again, thinking historically where some of the like exchange mentality came into play. Mm -hmm. So now in America, you have whatever Lindy Exchange, San Diego Lindy Exchange, Chicago Lindy Exchange, mm -hmm. Balboa Exchange, whatever, where now the focus is more social dancing at our local venues versus competition or classes. Yeah. Uh, but now now it's things are getting wishy-washy because a lot of exchanges will have classes a lot of exchanges will have little competitions and i'm old enough where the original and i was in chicago so remember 1998 i went I on a date that. in chicago the original and anybody out there please correct me if i'm wrong but the original exchange was a small group of dancers from chicago going over to san francisco we're talking like four couples eight people <laughs> Right, And these eight went over to San Francisco and danced. And then a month or two later, eight or ten San Francisco dancers mm -hmm. came to Chicago. Yeah, That's, That was the bing. That was the, ooh, we should do a Lindy exchange. Where the point was you exchange, in my opinion, you exchange the joy of your local community. Mm -hmm. This is where, again, I say we're getting away from the original intent of the exchange because now you do a Lindy exchange and it might be at a hotel or it might be at one venue. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's sad. If, if you, again, I challenge all of you out there, all you community leaders, at your next exchange, think about any given month of your scene your local scene what are the venues what are the bands can you in one weekend support and show everyone coming from out of town all those beautiful little nuggets you have in your community mm. or are you going to do the convenient thing and just have it at one place yeah 
There, there, you see what I'm saying? There is a nice event um, who is coming about uh, uh, exchange uh, in between Toulouse and Barcelona. And it seems to be uh, the nice way, really, with the a lot of sports. And yes. Uh, and, two months bef and two months later, um, in, in the other city. So yeah. it seems to be great. Uh, yeah. And we, we want to do the same with um, uh, Corsica. Um, on the island with uh, our community in Provence and we want to to make an exchange uh, soon and I think uh, I think that that's also a lot more reasonable and doable financially because you don't need the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to make it work hmm. like work it so that it doesn't take a ton of people but you're really really sharing the joy of your local community with a smaller group, whether it be one city, one-to-one, -one, or inviting other people to come in. But if you come, if you come to San Diego, I would want you to see all these neat little venues that we have available in San Diego versus always dancing every night in the same place. Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah, it would, be, eh. it would be nice. It's okay. Wherever, San Diego, Spokane, Washington. I say San Diego. I lived in San Diego for a long time, so that rolls off the tongue more than... Sorry, Spokane. That's my, <laughs> my hometown now. Spokane, Washington. So, um, But wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you are. And it doesn't matter if your scene is 1,000 people or 10 people. If you're a 10-person scene, you can absolutely hold an exchange. Reach out to another smaller community and do the, do the back and forth mm. and share your venue, share what you do. Yeah. Um, thank you for, for all that, really. Uh, I learned a lot. Um, I changed the, the topic and I, I, I would like to move on about the, um, the swing dance band. The, um, um, as we can see that the, the community growing up every year, um, the, the swing bands also came up everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, in Vilnius, in Spain, in Italia, in the US, of course. And uh, I, a few days ago, uh, I hear a um, South African swing band. Yeah, it happened. A Chinese swing band, a Bangkok swing band uh, from Melbourne also. Very good things in, in New Zealand, too. There is in um, Australia, uh, everywhere. Uh, um, is there some... And in France, we have a lot of really good Bunch French good bands music, and yes. guys. Um, is there are some, some modern bands you really appreciate, and um, especially for Dancing Balboa, maybe, or not? Do I, do I have? Yeah. Do I mean, I, s now you're getting into an area where I'm, I got to be honest, I'm not that picky. Mm -hmm. no, I, yeah. if I we can't be everywhere. Right? Yeah, right? I, I, I think if anybody is has the ability to play an instrument and and can can share that music um i you mean obviously you can you can hear if it's a good band or a ba quote unquote bad band mm -hmm. but and remember i come from the generation of of a swing dancer so i don't care if the band plays something slow mm -hmm. i don't care if the band plays something like a waltz or a latin not that I want it to be the whole night, mm -hmm. but you want to have fun with swing dancers? Put a waltz on. You want to see something weird? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch um, somebody try to do like six count jitterbug or East Coast swing or Lindy Hop to a waltz. That's funny to yep. me. Uh, but did uh, you get what I mean? So yeah. I, I appreciate live music and, and them and the band's ability to play everything. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, completely. So, it's, yeah. Um, I, I just I love it all. I love all the music. It's funny what you said because a few weeks ago uh, <laughs> I danced with um, Australian Ellie Brekini, Breniki, sorry, and um, she she came she came from in Marseille with Marty Gasol from Spain and uh, they they teach a workshop and uh, at at night there was a, a local French Marseille band and uh, it was the just the start and at some point. Uh, we dance with Ellie, uh, nice dance, and we want to dance the another one. And paf, it was a waltz, and uh, I was completely lost. Completely, <laughs> it was my my misery dance. Uh, I apologize ten, ten but times. But you tried. But I tried. Yeah. yeah I, I I don't 
lose the thing and no, 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 no. But it was so uncomfortable. And, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, f for joking, I'll write to uh, and next one. Uh, uh, I, I will um, practice my vowels. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you're right. It was really uh, unexpected and um, and and funny and and it was something like. Whoa, comfort zone. Okay, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, 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 it was uh, challenging. Yeah, yeah. completely. Um, and so, I, I think there. Okay, in America, I think we had a lot more live music resources originally than Europe. I could be wrong. And the reason I bring this up is because I think there's a lot of bands in America, other than like like Jonathan Stout and those guys, because they're like, Jonathan was a dancer, so he understands mm. playing for dancers. But there's a lot of bands that don't know how to play for dancers. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so with this resurgence of music, obviously there's a demand for it. There's, there's more dance events, therefore we need more bands for dancing. But also I think as an organizer... You, you need to educate the bands on being a, a, a dance band. There's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. If you play jazz for 14 minutes, it's, yep. it's cool. It's really nice. But, right, uh, but maybe the dance yep. floor will be empty. Yes. And so I, I know there's been a couple times in, in the States I've had to have a chat with the band leader. Uh, and at some you know, sometimes we've, we've argued because they're saying, like, no, this is what we do. I said, but your audience your audience is d is dancers tonight it's not people sitting down listening and you you need to understand what what your audience wants and the one guy and one leader said to me is like i know what they want so i just i just let him do his thing mm -hmm. and then i sent him all the emails of all the feedback i it was I, good no, no because he yeah. they every it, it was almost like every okay so now here's a my, my little advice, I'm not a musician, but uh, here's my little advice to all of you band leaders out there. If you play for a swing dance, not every song has to have every spot solo. It might be the norm for like a jazz gig or something, but dancers want shorter songs. I want to dance with as many people as possible yeah. during the one hour, two hours, whatever I'm there. So shorter songs are appreciated. And the other thing is if you're a band leader and you, and you have everybody soloing every single song... Every song really does start to sound the same. Yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. so uh, be creative in your orchestration of who's soloing and who's not. Yeah. You know, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and so that, that was the argument we had because, like, he was playing great. And they were great musicians, and it sounded great. But, but the, every song, the, the trumpet solo, then the clarinet solo, then the trombone solo, boom. Next song, trumpet solo, clarinet solo, trombone solo, boom. It was the formula. It was the, it was the chart. That's the way the charts were. That's the way they were going to play them. Like, you got to mix it up a little bit and shorten it a little bit. And they weren't interested in hearing that feedback. And, and so they, they're a great band, but they don't, they're not getting booked for dancers as much anymore because they weren't willing to adjust and hear that feedback. So hmm. oh, now it, the, they will be better now. Hopefully, yeah. And I've for done this audience. Yeah, I, hopefully. Yeah. And, and I've, I've, had the, I've done some musicality classes with live bands uh, um, Paul Constantino oh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was in Pittsburgh and we d we had a really nice session with a boiler maker boiler makers mm -hmm. yes and uh, we had a really nice session there's been some other bands over the years and and I I what's been really nice about that is not only did the dancers come up and say like that was really and there's so many mu the whole musicality you could do hours and hours there's like it's no way to encapsulate that into like a one hour class or whatever you can do a whole weekend on that you can whatever but what was nice is the dancers came up and was like wow that was really cool and this and that and the, even the musicians would came up afterwards and like hey man that that actually helped us out too mm -hmm. because i was the in-between right i i was the in-between talking with the band and the dancers and and showing that relationship that I'm guessing used to be just normal back in the Savoy days, Chick Webb and Count Basie and mm. the dancers. Mm. There was that symbiotic relationship and they understood each other a lot more than we do today. Exactly. I think we're getting back I think we're getting back to that point, which is really cool. Yeah. 
more and more. Yeah. Yeah. So then there is very nice competition. Or uh, I saw this year that um, you can compete uh, with uh, one of the musicians playing just one solo, just alone, and you dance on it. Wow. Very difficult, but mm. funny. And there is more and more things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Um, thank you very much. Do you have um, um, other things you want to say before we, we say goodbye? Ooh, I, I, if you want to look me up, um, there's uh, information about me actually still at swingdancingsandiego.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we still organize a whole bunch of stuff. I like providing opportunities for people to teach and dance down there. So that quote-unquote company is still going on. Uh, please go and support All Bell Weekend and Camp Hollywood and Cal Bell. Those are all great events. And, you know, us, of course, I have a special love for All Bell Weekend. Valerie mm -hmm. is awesome, a great friend of mine. Uh, but nowadays, I, b because I've moved around so much the last few years, uh, I have a website called Retro Rhythm. Yeah. So RetroRhythm.com is where you can contact me. Um, I have uh, a family now, so I don't travel as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're interested, uh, more than willing to be helpful to you. And when I say you, a dancer, an organizer, a musician, a community leader. Um, I've seen a lot of different things, and I've been through a lot. And so I think I can be really helpful to you in, in, in many ways if, if you want to reach out to me. I would love to be helpful to the next generation of, of dancers, of organizers, and, and whatnot. So please feel free to, to look me up, and we go from there. Amen. It's an it's a amen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Sweet.